For more physics related videos, please subscribe. Welcome to Stellar Physics 2B. This is the second video in an aside on thermodynamics. In the previous video, Stellar Physics 2A, we derived some basic thermodynamic quantities. In this video, we're going to go over some of their applications in stars. We'll go over degenerate matter versus non degenerate matter, and we'll go over the relativistic and non relativistic limits. I've rated the physics level in this video as intermediate. So first, let's summarize what we derived in the previous video. We first defined what's called the Landau potential. Sometimes it's called the thermodynamic potential as well. This potential is a function of temperature, volume, and chemical potential. And it's equal to the total energy minus the temperature times the entropy and minus the chemical potential times the number of particles. And it's equal to the negative of the pressure times the volume. We show that the potential was equal to the following, where the plus is in the case of fermions. So here, if we have a plus here, it's for fermions, and if it's a minus, it's for bosons. X in this integral is just the momentum divided by temperature. The potential does not actually depend on X as it's being integrated out. Epsilon is the energy divided by temperature. Mu is the mass divided by temperature, and eta is the chemical potential divided by temperature. Eta is often referred to as the degeneracy parameter, and you have to be careful not to confuse it with this quantity G here, which is called the degeneracy. So G is the degeneracy, and eta is sometimes called the degeneracy parameter. So you don't want to mix them up. From this potential, we can get the following quantities. We can get the pressure, which is the negative derivative of the potential with respect to volume, holding temperature and chemical potential constant. The entropy per volume is the negative derivative with respect to temperature divided by the volume. So capital S up here is the total entropy, whereas little s is the total entropy per volume. And similarly, little n is the number density. Capital N is the total number of particles little n is the number of particles per volume, and that's the negative derivative of the potential with respect to the chemical potential divided by the volume. Once we have these three quantities, we can get the energy density, which is little u. Big U is the total energy. The energy density can also be found by integrating the energy over the number of particles, or in this case, over the number density of particles. If you multiply by volume, then you'll have the total energy. From this potential, we can also get a general probability density. So we can find any quantity from this as long as we know how it depends on x. Recall that x is basically the same thing as a momentum. So if you know how a quantity depends on momentum, you can use the probability density to find its average value. Now let's go over degenerate versus non degenerate matter. What we call degenerate matter is when the chemical potential is large compared to the temperature. This is equivalent to saying that eta is greater than 1. So now you see why this is called the degeneracy parameter. This is also sometimes called the low temperature limit. Now in reality, the temperature itself doesn't have to be low, it just has to be lower than the chemical potential. So for example, you may remember from stellar physics 1D, collapsing stellar iron cores are frozen crystalline solids, but they have a very high temperature. So they behave like a low temperature object, in the sense that their chemical potential is large compared to the temperature, even though the temperature itself is very high, in the sense that the average particle energy is very high. So this type of matter is characterized by extreme densities, meaning that the particle separation, which I'm calling delta x, is very small, and due to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, this means that the range in momentum is very large. Such matter is intrinsically quantum mechanical, and it behaves in ways that we don't experience as human beings. One important characteristic of this type of matter is that the pressure is entirely dependent on the number of particles, and independent on the temperature. So, recall way back at our mother's knee when we were in stellar physics 1a, and we were looking at the minimum mass of a star, and it turned out it was determined by this limit. The most important characteristic of degenerate matter 
is that all the particles are concentrated in the lowest energy states. So another way to say this is that all or most of the lowest energy states are occupied, and the higher energy states are sparsely occupied. Thermodynamically speaking, when only the lowest possible energy states are occupied, this is what we call material at zero temperature. This type of matter is found in the later stages of the stellar life cycle. So for example, in iron cores, white dwarfs, and neutron stars. Non-degenerate matter is when the chemical potential is less than the temperature. So when eta is less than one. This type of matter is generally dilute, and it's what you would call normal matter, meaning it's the type of matter we experience as human beings every day. In this case, the pressure does depend on the temperature, and the quantum energy states are sparsely populated, and often the lower energy states may not be populated at all. Non-degenerate matter is found in main sequence stars and pretty much everywhere else. If you're finding this video interesting so far, please be sure to like and subscribe and maybe share it with a couple friends. Let's now take a look at the relativistic limit. The relativistic limit is characterized by the mass being much less than the temperature, or by the energy being predominantly kinetic energy. So in this case, we can treat the mass as zero and approximate that the energy is the same as the momentum. In the relativistic limit, the Landau potential will reduce to the following integral. This integral is called the Bose or the Fermi integral. If it's a minus, it's a Bose integral. If it's a plus, it's a Fermi integral. The degree of the integral is the exponent up here. So this would be a third degree Bose or Fermi integral, and it's a function of eta. If eta is zero, they're solvable analytically. When eta is not zero, they're generally not solvable analytically, but they have interesting properties and ladder operations to go from one degree to another degree which I'm not going to go over at this time. So let's look at the case for degenerate matter first. When it comes to stars, this will only apply to fermions. We won't see any cases of relativistic degenerate bosons. And generally speaking, this will apply to electrons and positrons in hot, dense cores. Then the material in neutron stars is also degenerate, and it may or may not be relativistic. In general, it seems that it's neither non-relativistic and neither relativistic, but really nobody knows for sure, as the equation of state of neutron stars is unknown. And in fact, this is sort of the holy grail of stellar physics, is figuring out what is the equation of state of neutron stars. In the degenerate case, the Fermi integral can be approximated using the Sommerfeld expansion. If you don't know what the Sommerfeld expansion is, it's a standard mathematical trick of approximating certain types of integrals. For non-degenerate relativistic matter, we have eta is less than zero. One example of this type of matter would be electrons and positrons in supernovae. In this case, the kth Fermi integral can be approximated as k factorial times e to the eta. The only relativistic non-degenerate bosons we will be dealing with are photons and they have a chemical potential of zero. In the case of eta equals zero, there is a useful relationship to go from the kth Bose integral to the kth Fermi integral. Next, let's look at the non-relativistic limit. In this limit, we're taking the mass to be much greater than the temperature, and most of the energy to be held in the rest mass. In this case, in order to evaluate the integral in the Landau potential, we're going to change from integrating over momentum to integrating over energy. Then we're going to rescale the energy by subtracting off the rest mass. We're also going to subtract off the rest mass from the chemical potential. So E tilde will be the energy minus the rest mass, and phi tilde will be the chemical potential minus the rest mass. And after making these substitutions, the Landau potential will take the following form. So you can see this is still a Bose or Fermi integral. It's just that the degree now is three halves, where originally it was three. And we've got a slightly different factor out front. So let's see what happens with degenerate matter. We're now going to define degenerate matter as eta tilde being greater than zero rather than eta. 
because that's what shows up here in the integral. This will apply to electrons and positrons in cold dense cores and nuclei in dense cores. So for example, white dwarfs, when they first form, are quite hot. And so in this case, the electrons would be degenerate but relativistic. After a while, the white dwarf will cool down. The electrons will remain degenerate, but they'll no longer be relativistic. And again, you can use the Sommerfeld expansion to approximate the integral. For non-degenerate, non-relativistic matter, we have eta tilde less than zero. And this basically applies to all matter everywhere except for in dense cores with the exception of photons as their rest mass is zero. This limit is the Maxwell-Boltzmann limit, and it's the type of matter we're accustomed to every day. In this case, the Landau potential will reduce to the following form. Notice there's no more plus or minuses in here. So it doesn't matter if you're dealing with bosons and fermions, the potential is the same. This potential will lead to the thermodynamic quantities we're all familiar with, PV equals NKT, the energy is 3 halves kT, etc. So those are the basic four cases we're going to deal with in stellar physics. Degenerate matter, relativistic and non-relativistic. Non-degenerate matter, relativistic and non-relativistic. There will be a few cases where the material will not fall nicely into one of these categories, mostly because it will be somewhere between relativistic and non-relativistic limit, meaning that the temperature will be approximately the same as the mass in which case the integral on the Landau potential does not reduce to a nice integral. If you found this video interesting, please like and subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified for future videos. In the next video, Thermodynamics 2C, we're going to go over the adiabatic index. This will be the last video in the thermodynamics review. After that, we will dive into the internal structure of stars.